everybody. So today we're going to be talking about dimensional analysis, which is the um, act of converting in between different units. Today we are going to start with just one step conversions. So there are different measuring systems used all over the world. Um, the two most common that we hear of are the imperial or English system and then the metric system. The United States uses the English system. The scientific community, and most of the rest of the world, to be perfectly honest, uses the metric system. And like I said, we often need to be able to convert between these two types of units based on traveling or just in scientific community or anything like that. And sometimes we'll even need to convert between units in the same measuring system. I'll get to that at some point. But let's talk about the metric system. What is it? So the following units are the base units for the given uh, measurements within metric system. So for mass, our base unit is going to be grams. Time, the base unit is seconds. Volume, the base unit is liters. Distance, the base unit is meters. And for temperature, there's actually two different base units, and that is Kelvin or degrees Celsius. These base units, I'm going to just move myself out of the way here for a second. These base units can then be added to in order to express values in different terms. For example, meters is the base unit for distance, but we also have things like centimeters and kilometers, um, where the centi and the kilo are different ways to express that same length. These are all different types of units, and we need to be able to convert in between them. So equivalencies, whoops, sorry guys. Equivalencies. This is a way to express the same measurement in two different units. So for example, this length here is two inches. That same length could also be said to be five centimeters, about. I'm, I'm being a little approximate here. Um, but it's the same length, just measured in two different units, two inches versus five centimeters. Same length, same distance, just two different units. The equivalency that we're talking about there is actually that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters or 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. This is something that's kind of hard for um, students to grasp, but it doesn't matter which way we think about it, it's still the same. One inch is 2.54 centimeters is the same as 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. They're equivalent. They are the same length, they're just different units. So those are what equivalencies are. Conversion factors are ways to utilize equivalencies. And what we do is where we put fractions where the numerator and the denominator are equivalencies, equal quantities expressed in different units. So one inch over 2.54 centimeters. That's that equivalency that I gave you in the last slide. Or 2.54 centimeters over one inch. These conversion factors are how we represent and utilize equivalencies within doing dimensional analysis calculations. So when we're setting up a conversion, you want to pay attention to the units always. This whole thing is about units. This is what we're trying um, to do is converting between units. So it's important that we pay attention to units and that we use them always. What you're going to begin with is what you know. You're always going to begin with the measurement in units that you know. That's going to start, that's going to be the start of your calculation. Then you want to ensure that you have conversion factors set up correctly so that the units will cancel out. So on the last slide I showed you that you could have one inch over 2.54 centimeters or you could have 2.54 centimeters over one inch. Which way that fraction is or which way that conversion factor is, is dependent on what unit you're starting with and what unit you're trying to get to. So if I have unit A, 
and I'm trying to get to unit B, and I have a conversion factor between unit A and unit B, I'm going to start out with a thing that I know, unit A, right here, and then I'm going to put my conversion factor next to it where so that unit A will cancel out, which means that unit A needs to be on the bottom, and then the unit B goes on top. That way unit A can cancel out with unit A, leaving me with unit B, which is the unit that I was desiring or I wanted to convert into. Then the unit that you're trying to convert to should end up on the top. There is an exception to this and something that um, I usually tell my students is that there are rules in chemistry and the only rule that is always true is that there are always exceptions to every rule. Um, and we'll get to these exceptions later on. But for now, assume that the unit you're trying to convert to should always end up on top. And then any numbers that are on the top you multiply and any numbers on the bottom you divide. So that's how we set up a conversion factor. Let's do an example. How many centimeters are in 3.74 inches? So start out with what we know, 3.74 inches. Then we know that conversion factor, 2.54 centimeters, is equivalent to one inch. So since I'm starting out in inches, I need my inches to go on the bottom of the conversion factor and my centimeters to go on the top. So I'm gonna fill in one inch on the bottom and 2.54 centimeters on the top. My inches can therefore cancel out and I'm left with centimeters, which is what I wanted. Everything on top gets multiplied, everything on bottom gets divided. So in my calculator, I would type in 3.74 times 2.54 divided by one. Now everybody knows that anything divided by one is what it was, so I don't actually need to do that step, but that's how I would do it. What my calculator spits out is 9.4996 centimeters. Now, here's where sig figs come back in because everything that we're doing is building upon itself. So our known value gives us the number of sig figs that we need to include in our answer. And the reason why it's the known value and not our conversion factor is because the conversion factor is a known quantity. So it has infinite sig figs. Remember that rule that we talked about? Known quantities have infinite sig figs. Well, if 2.54 has infinite sig figs and one inch has infinite sig figs, then they aren't the fewest number of sig figs in the problem. They aren't gonna limit our answer. It's gonna come from that known value here. So in this case, 3.74 inches has one, two, three sig figs, a three, seven, and four. And so my answer is only gonna get to have one, two, three sig figs, or 9.49. I'm gonna look to the next number, which is a nine, to do figure out my rounding. Nine is going to round nine up again to 10 which is gonna round that four up to five, and then we're gonna to need to put a zero in where that nine, that the significant nine, the third digit, used to be. So my answer becomes 9.50 centimeters. Okay, this may seem simple, it may seem complicated. Whatever it is, it's the beginning of our steps and our process through dimensional analysis. We're going to start with one step, we'll move on to two-step and multi-step, and then many other different things. But this is just the beginning, so get comfortable.